What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to Lizanak. It's episode number 12, 12, 13, 13. My notes, my notes are going to save me. It's 13. How are we here? It's unlucky for some. No matter what happens today, it's not really going to be unlucky for us. And I'll tell you why that is. Because we have won La Ligue. We've been promoted, just about got there uh, with a couple of games to spare. You can see we sit on 59 points, agged in second. And well, with that... Stuff's changed very, very quickly here at Luzanac. We've been offered a professional deal as a manager. Our professional status as a club has shot up to semi-pro. And, uh, well, I am in the midst of trying to sort out the mess at the club. You can see here, in terms of players, there's one player that's on a contract. Hopefully more are going to be on a contract in the next week or two. Benjamin Gebert, the first player I was able to get on a deal, is delighted. He's getting £30 a week. It's a little bit like getting some pocket money. Um, and uh, yeah, well now he can afford to feed his family and stuff. I don't know what they're going to eat for £30 a week. But yeah, he. I felt like he was the first person who deserved a new deal. And, uh, well, obviously that is going to be a quite big change for us. Now, uh, one issue I have faced, and it's an issue that you may have faced yourself if you've been playing along with the Luznat databases, when you go semi-pro, the board go, okay, we need no staff members anymore. So, um, yeah, you can see here we have kind of one out of zero assistant managers, one out of zero head of youth developments, five out of zero coaches. This does fix itself. But it might make renegotiating some staff contracts a little bit awkward in the immediate term. So yeah, as amazing as all of our staff members are, unfortunately for us, we may run into some issues giving them, um, you know, slightly more significant contracts. I say that, despite the fact that we are now over our limit, I was able to give Simon Pongol a contract of £350 a week. He is still here. I've not forgotten about him. And he was another one of the players who I was immediately keen to throw some money in front of. I need him to stay. He's, you know, I feel like he he is Luzanak to me at this point, is Simon Pongol. He's with me thick and thin last year on the pitch, this year in the dugout. Um... But yeah, as I said, there's going to be more players getting offered contracts in the next week or two. Um, you know, if we just look at the finances, uh, you can see we've been given a wage budget of just shy of £10,000. That feels pretty good until you realise that the leagues that we are going to be going into next year are quite a big step up. And obviously this year was a reasonably big step up, especially as a team who were going to remain amateur. But going into the French National De, um, it's a league where all the B teams play. Now, the B teams can't get promoted from these leagues. So, for example, you can see here Lille have won the league, but Mulhouse, who finished fifth, because they're the first non-B league team, that they get the promotion spot. So yeah, there's three relegation spots, but... Yeah, the B, the B teams are going to be weird next year. I feel like we're entering the land of the B teams. Um, yeah, it's a weird situation where most teams finish fifth and get automatic promotion for it. So I suppose that's what we'll be striving towards next year in a kind of bizarre way. But anyway, in terms of stuff going on at the pitch, we have played a few games, obviously, to see out the season. Last time I was with you, you took on Rodez. Since then, we have played four games. The first game we played was against Pibricasse. Just as a reminder, um, they, of course, got promoted via the playoffs with us last year. They've got two draws since we were last here, but they have yet to win a game this season. Four points in 25 games, and while we weren't very kind to them, we beat them 4-0. Big bit of news here was the fact that Big Dub played superbly. He got his first ever senior goals for the club in this game. And uh, yeah, he's just been a really, really good player from a developmental standpoint. One of those players who's really gone under the radar. Wasn't in my first team plans to start the year. And then I kind of checked up on him. And I'm sure we've all been there. You're playing football manager. You go back and look at a youngster and go, you were not that good last time I looked at you. That was kind of what happened with Big Dub here. Um, obviously he joined us in July. He's now been at the club 10 months. Look at this development in 10 months. Just look at it. Drink it in. Absolutely insane stuff. So, so promising. His physicals have shot up. His mentals have done really good things. Uh, obviously, we signed him from Toulouse Metropole this year on a free transfer. They didn't play him too much in their first season, having him at their, well, in, the, in their team. I, I need to stop playing him way more, I think, because he looks really, really good on the face of things. Um, and yeah, he played really, really well in that win against Pibricasse. We took on Kene Roussillon. A bit of a disappointing one this game. We took the lead in the 28th minute. It was Nguala at the back post with a header. Um, the sad bit of news was that we got a sending off. Uh, Jordan Saban. Just a very, very naughty boy in centre mid and well off the back of that, going down a man. They scored, if I'm not mistaken, just before half-time. It may have been just after half-time. Either way, it was not a good time to concede. The good news is we rallied behind that and for the rest of the game, the next 45 minutes, we held firm, we defended well. 
and we managed to salvage a draw. We then took on Stad, uh, Burkarau, I've never been able to say this team's name, we'll just call them Stad, again, definitely not their name, but a 3-1 win in this one, and Bukhani with two, great to see him get some goals to end out the season, sadly, I did try and convince him not to retire, I begged him, I grabbed him around like the bottom of his trousers and shook, shook at them, saying, please, please don't leave us, Bukhani, but no, no, he's, he's said, no, I've had enough, don't want to play football anymore, and uh, he is retiring at the end of the year. He will be becoming a scout. Um, he's not been offered a professional deal as a scout yet. Will he ever be offered a professional deal as a scout? Um, I'll let you guess what I'm thinking with regards to that. Anyway, the last game we had was against Blagnac, a team in fourth. Uh, we'd already sealed, I believe, promo actually, had we sealed promotion before this game? I can't remember. Either way, we won this one 2-0, uh, and Bacani scored in it. Of course he did. He's ending his career on a high, and then we got an own goal. A very weird one. Defender chasing in at the back post. Didn't deal with it very well, and in the end, just turned into a superb little finish. So anyway, that's the first four games of this episode down. We've got one last one to do here live, and then end of season review time. The end of season two, and while today we take on AS Murray, they are in fifth. This is the last fond farewell, I suppose, for the likes of Farfan and Mbukani. We're going to give B uh, Big Dub a chance here just to show us what he's made of. Uh, I don't feel like he's been given a fair chance over the course of this season. As I said, kind of realised a little bit too late, perhaps. Actually, hang on a minute, this guy's really good suddenly. And as a result, I've been trying to play him a little bit more. So Ban is back from suspension, so we'll bring him into the team. Um, obviously, with us going semi-pro, I am going to have a bit of a... Not necessarily a challenge on my hand, but I feel like it could get a bit interesting trying to sort out all the players' contracts. Particularly with our back four. Um, with, with three of the players over the age of 32, I don't really want to give them massive wage rises and massive paydays um, because of their age. You know, They're not going to be long-term solutions for us. However, I am a tiny bit worried... That given the fact they are so experienced, they are going to be expecting a slightly higher wage. Um, going to be waiting, I suppose, until the end of the year to sort that. And the reason I'm not sorting out more of the contract sooner is because a lot of the players I make pre-agreements with. So if you don't know, when you're an amateur team, you can make pre-agreements with players to renew their contracts at the end of the year on a similar term. Um, you can do that as an amateur club, um, and it prevents the players getting poached as easily. So I've done that with a lot of the players where, you know, at the end of May, I think tomorrow actually, they are going to sign new amateur deals at the club. Those were contracts agreed months ago. However, off the back of that, I think a week or two later, we are going to have to go back to them and go, yeah, you know that deal you signed a week ago for nothing? Yeah, here, here's one for 30 quid. Enjoy. <laughs> but anyway, that that's kind of why more of the players haven't been offered contracts. But that said... Um, you know, it's going to be a big, busy job. I feel like going semi-pro is a bit of a leap forward. Obviously, we've sorted out a lot of the staff now. I'm hoping we're not going to have loads of issues where at the end of the season, they're all going to just jump ship, even if I can't offer them all semi-pro contracts. Um, it is a weird issue, the one with the staff members kind of numbers all being reduced to zero by the board. Could not find a way to fix it in the database. If you're someone who is a keen editor of the Football Agile database, maybe you work with Sports Interactive. I know there's some of you people at SI who watch my videos. If you know what's going on there, please, answers on a postcard. I would love to know, why does the board upon me going semi-pro go, yeah, you can't have any staff members anymore? Anyway, one of the players who may well be collateral of that situation is Mbukani, but he scored again for us. He's now scored in his last three games of his career. It's not a, little, a bad little way, I suppose, to end your... Um, career is it to just end up with a, with three goals in your last three games or four goals in your last three games actually but just to end on a goal, goal scoring run I feel like he's found his feet in the French tier or the French fifth tier rather um, which when you put it like that kind of sounds like it'd be a bit obvious that he would do quite well at this level but no he really has he's he's found his groove he's found his feet he's not looked out of place at all and actually I feel like he's gonna be one of the big challenges to kind of fill whilst El Mutaki has done a job for us Obviously, he did an immense job for us last year. This year, Mbukani's kind of taken over. Farfan has had a little bit less of an impact, perhaps. But um, I've got to weigh up. Is El Mutaki the man who we can rely on to take us forward into the next division? I mean, it's going to be Tier 4 next year. Um, obviously, as you've seen, there's loads of B teams in the league. It's a similar season to this season that we've just had in terms of 26-game seasons, games nice and spaced out. Just the weird thing is that you can finish fifth and lose 10 games and still get promoted because of all the B teams. They can't go higher than the fourth tier. Um, so there could be some really interesting games, actually. As Barane bought bar scores a superb little goal into the top corner. What a finish that was for him. 
Seventh goal of the year. A load of his goals have come from penalties and come from set pieces. This one, I guess, technically did come from set pieces. I'll hold my hands up and admit it. But let's be honest, that was not a very set piecey goal. Edge the area, pulls the trigger into the top bins. Keeper, absolutely no chance. And, uh, well, Hugo Robert has got a book in. Be, be well behaved, Hugo. Be well behaved, boys. I'm going to tell the players I'm far from pleased, but it's a bit of a lie. Away from home against a team who are in the top five. This is not terrible by any means. Um, we'll see how we get on just in this second half. But we're cruising away, I feel like, at this point towards our promotion. Of course, worth noting, our new stadium is in the planning stages. A few people said, Jack, what happens if you build a stadium now and then it's not up to league uh, standards? I've tested that in the database the board will build a new stadium. It will happen. Salim Baghdad has just scored against us. Not not a last name that I've ever come across before, I'll be honest. He's just scored at the back post. He's just scored at the back post. Whipped in. It's like Karen Buali. He, he looks like he's just having a little stroll in the box. He's not even looking at what's going on. And well, with their first shot on target, they found the back of the net. Let's make some changes, shall we? Sega Kiate has been quiet. Let's bring in Nguala, move Farfan out onto the right-hand side. Of course, him and Mbukani playing their final ever senior games today. Big Dub's been a disappointment. And you know what? Last change. Let's take off Mbukani to a rapturous applause. He's been big for us this year as Mbukani. I'll applaud him. Mbukani's having a party. I don't know. What do fans say about Mbukani? It's not a very chantable name, I feel like. Either way, it's 2-1. He's done, his, he's done his job. He's done his job. Now it's down to the defence to do their job as Karen Barley heads it clear. Nkawala bringing it forward on the break. Look at him go. He's running like the wind. He's running like the wind. He is the wind. El Mutaki blocked Bar. Has scored again. He's got two in the game. What is this? I'm not sure what the goalkeeping was there, to be honest. That, that felt like a bit of a gift for him. Good to see El Mutaki involved in the build-up play. He's been given the assist there. And sometimes in Football Manager, players aren't given the credit for the assist they deserve. This one here... He does not deserve an assist for that. He tried to shoot it and it's hit the defender and fortuitously fallen into the path of Barr, who tucks it away to make it 3-1. Right, time to get shouty-shouty, I think. Let's end this season on a high. I want to see Farfan do something. He's got one assist in this game. Come on, Jefferson. You can do it, my friend. He can't do it. He can't do it. I mean, compared to Mbukani, I feel like Farfan's had a significantly lesser impact on the team. But nevertheless, a great little result to end the season. Baran Bar picks up Man of the Match, a player who quite frequently I've criticised for not doing enough. And I feel like finally he's heard me. Perhaps the fear of uh, you know next season being ousted out of the team has uh, got to him, I suppose. And he's decided, actually, maybe I need to actually start doing some stuff. But anyway, that is going to wrap up the season here. Uh, I'm going to jump forward to the end of season awards and stuff. We'll look through some stuff, talk about the planning for next season. Uh, I don't know how long that's going to take. Hopefully the stadium's going to be on its way. Uh, I suppose we shall go forward and find out. I'll join you guys in just a second. Sorry, I've, c I've come back early here. I hit continue once and Farfan's just retired immediately. He was counting down the days till we just finished the league season. He's gone immediately. Ember Carney's still at the club. I've tried to offer him a contract and he won't join as a scout. I'm very, very upset. I may not be over this. If the mood for this rest of the video is bad, this is why. Why would you leave me like this, Jefferson? Let me say goodbye properly, man. Okay, guys, so I've hit continue once more and just immediately at the end of the season bit. So I didn't need to go away or anything, but unless you want to watch me drink Coca-Cola, walk away from my desk for five minutes, I have cut out the last two minutes of action. But here we are, the overall best 11 at the club after two seasons. What a place to start. I think Gebert in goal has kind of made a fair shout for himself. Some heroic performances, very rarely in Football Manager, do you look at a goalkeeper and go, yeah, you were actually really good this year. Gebert is the exception. Have, has anyone ever seen a goalkeeper get an 8.2 rating before in a game? I mean, I haven't. He saved a penalty in the 118th minute of that cup game before we went up the other end and scored. I mean, he deserves so much credit for that. And to be fair, 15 assists is really, really impressive. The back four is interesting. Uh, Joan didn't play much this year. Lasmi was more of a backup this year. Obviously, Hugo Robert, vice-captain, had a superb little season for us. A player who... I do think can do a job going into the next league. Uh, you can see, obviously, Karen Buwali at right back. I feel like with his physicals, we probably do need to be planning ahead for replacing him going into this coming season. Obviously, we're going to be coming up against B teams of some very big clubs in France. And the reality is they're going to have all their little youngsters who are all going to be little speed demons and probably a little bit quicker than Asane here. 
And, uh, well, it, it'd be unfair. It'd be a bit like leaving Grandpa on childminding duties, you know, looking after some children with far too much energy. So I feel like we do need to help him out there. You can see here, Savannah's immediately made a mark in the team. He has slotted straight into the, the Dream 11 for the overall best 11 at the club. Despite only playing 13 games this year, he's got a 7.73 rating, or 7.37 rating rather. Very keen to get him signed to a more permanent deal, um, because I can imagine there are going to be some pretty big teams sniffing around for him. I think he can do a job for us next year. A little bit sad to see Jabby here. You might be sad if he can chat. You've not talked about Jabby all season. Justice for Jabby. I'll tell you why I'm not talking to him. He's played two appearances off the bench, and that's kind of been it for him. He's not even a bad player, but with the likes of Big Dub coming through, Castian coming through, having Farfan in the team, I just haven't had a spot for little old Salim Jabby. And I mean, to be fair, to an extent, Saban has also oust him. You can see, obviously, Al Mutaki out on the left-hand side here. Um, been a great player again this year. You could not really argue with his contributions. Under normal circumstances, seven goals in 19 games would be a good little return. Obviously, a big step up in level, I think, this year. It's going to be another big step ne next year. Um, I am a tiny bit concerned. He's not quite improved as much as I would have hoped he could have improved. I mean, he has really, you know, jumped forward in a few areas, such as his composure, which is now up to nine. Equally, there are some of his areas of his game that have suffered. I'm thinking that in the immediate term... We get him signed to a more permanent deal and kind of just see how he develops with kind of part-time training. Um, obviously, that is going to be a big difference this next year. He's going to be going semi-pro players training that little bit more regularly. Is going to be a little bit of a difference maker for us. Anyway, you can see here, Sega Kieta on the right obviously had some issues with injuries this year. Castiang um, has just scored a load of free kicks this year. He's been a little bit of a free kick beast. Six assists, five goals. Kind of interesting how many players who have only been at the team this year have broken into the overall best 11. And of course, up top, Simon upon goal holds down his spot. Not sure how much longer he's going to be able to hold that down. Anyway, looking at the end of season awards, you can see here, Matteo Castang got the, uh, the fans player of the year. The fans really do like this guy, which is a little bit interesting because I feel like his big competition at centre attack in mid is Big Dub. And actually, when you compare the two of them, I think you can make a pretty legitimate argument that Big Dub is the better of the two players. So I'm hoping the fans aren't going to be too attached to Matteo because I'm concerned. Um, you can see Hugo Robert came second. I think he's making a pretty strong case for the possibility that he could be either full captain next year or at least retain his vice captaincy. He's a good player. Whether or not he's going to be good enough for the next level up, I guess, is a bit of a question mark. You can see he'd be a good player for most teams at this level. I do worry a little bit about his important matches being a bit of a problem, particularly as we progress up the leagues. But for now, I think he can do a job for us. He's got the core three, the heading, the marking and tackling. In the lower leagues, they're the three things you need. And to be fair, actually, for a lower league centre-back, he's actually got pretty good ball-playing abilities as well with his passing and vision. Karen Bowali came third in the Fans Player of the Year. I absolutely adore that. Seven assists to his name, three goals as well. I mean, he's been at the club a long, long, long time, and he's proving his worth yet again. Uh, eclipsing his numbers, actually, of last year in terms of on the pitch, I would say now, you can tell from his average rating, last year he was more consistent. This year his highs were a lot higher, his lows were a lot lower as well. As I said, I think he's the kind of player who's going to suffer next year with a kind of big step up. Anyway, Matteo Castang scored the, the goal of the season, so I suppose we should take a look at that. Um, you can see it came against Pibracasse. This should, watch it again. Was this a free kick by any chance? Of course it was. Hits it, bends it. I think he scored better free kicks than that football manager. I'm going to be honest. Underwhelmed. The young player of the year went to Hugo Robert. Signing of the year was Castang. Now, end of season review, you can see here. French Cup expectations were to finish in the 8th round. We got to the ninth round. Obviously, winning the league is very, very good. Um, you can see here, basically, very few pundits... Uh, would have been brave enough to pluck Luzanak from mid-table obscurity in pre-season and mark them out as a, for bigger and better things. Uh, we surprised everyone. I mean, to be honest, let's be honest, Embakani and Farfan helped massively with that. They really were a cut above everyone else. Um, our average attendance was 743. Of course, that was in our new temporary home, which is a five-hour round trip away from Luzanak. I'm not sure how much that pay plays an effect in Football Manager to attendances, but it feels like it would play... A pretty large impact. Anyway, you can see here, new board long-term visions. They're up in the visions, everyone. Um, obviously, we now have to work within a wage budget because we do have a wage budget. Expectation for next year is mid-table, so they are hoping that we're not going to get caught up in a relegation fight. Interesting to see the club culture has updated quite a lot. A lot of new things, but actually a lot of these, I think, have been added in off the back of us 
playing like them. There's stuff like signing players who are under 23, playing attacking football, playing possession football. That's kind of stuff we've already been doing. So I'm not so worried about accepting that and I suppose forcing ourselves into, well, having to play like that. Anyway, the players are now on break till July 5th. It's going to be a big, big season ahead. That promotion um, is going to raise some challenges, I think, for us going into the new year. You can see there's already a gap in our team where Farfan just retired instantaneously. And Bacani's decided he's going to be a little bit more patient about his retirement plans. You can see here, though, probably right to retire. I did ask him to reconsider, but his physicals are just falling off a cliff face. Although, he can still jump. Even if he can't run, he can still jump. And he is a weapon of mass destruction from set pieces. I feel like we're going to need to get a new WMD in. Um, if you have any suggestions for WMDs, leave them in the comments. Uh, don't. You're now on a government watch list. I'm on one too. That's not... That, just a, a big target man. If you know of any, let, give me their phone numbers because that's the extent of our scouting right now. Anyway, if we just take a look at the squad as a whole, I think a good place to start is with the average ratings. M. Bacani, 11 goals in 18 appearances, five of those on off the bench. So the ban also coming in midway through the year and performing really well. Um, it's without doubt in my mind that without you know these two signings and also the far fan signing, we wouldn't have been where we were this year. Obviously, it's the beauty of being an amateur club, not bound by the restrictions of transfer windows and registration windows. Is we can sign players when we want. And Bacani especially, obviously, brought in off the basis of the fact we did promise him a job as a scout, even though we've never sent him out on a scouting assignment. Um, obviously, the transfers have worked out really well for us this year. Uh, even players like Sega Kieta have come in and had a really big impact. You know, seven goals, five assists. For a player who starts the type team was really, you know, marred by injury. Really didn't get going until December time. He really kicked on and did great things. And of course, at the back, a place where we didn't replace too many personnel this year. Uh, Karen Bowali and Robert did a, a, you know, a really, really good job. I mean, Robert got six goals from centre back for crying out li loud. Kevin Deson was a bit of a disappointment. I feel like he's at a similar point in his career to Karen Buali, where he's been a good little fullback for us this year. I don't know how much I value his physicals at this point, because they have just completely dropped off a cliff. I feel like he can maybe make for a good little backup centre-back. But the reality is, next year we're going up a league, and it's going to be tough. It's going to be really, really tough in the National 2. Not necessarily because of the overall leap in quality, but because when we're taking on the, the B teams, the B teams have very, very good players. I mean, if we just have a quick peek here at, I guess, some of the players who play for the likes of Lille, who won the league in their respective league, they've got players like this guy, uh, Alex Alexis Flips, who are just so much quicker than our players. And I do fear that having wing-backs of all positions, or, or full-backs on attack of all positions, um, who have just awful physicals is just asking for a bit of a recipe for disaster of course the last piece of our back for is Bilek who sees kind of what's the word also like the others similarly I don't know why that word but it's gone from my vocabulary but similarly to the other two players we just talked about his physicals are falling off a cliff if we're coming up against a really young starlet you know the players who are expected by the big teams to break into their first teams in the coming year it could be a bit like feeding players to the wolves so i think that's the biggest area of concern for me i do feel like we need to find a new Embercani and a new far fan um i don't even mean that in kind of a joking memeing way i feel like when people saw me sign simon pongo last year they thought it was a bit of a joke he was very good and this year Embercani was genuinely very very good and if we can find another player who fills a similar role in the squad to those players you know can be an older veteran striker who can make things work for us, provide a bit of leadership in what is hopefully going to evolve to be a much younger squad, that will be a big benefit to us. I am overly concerned, to be honest, about how many players we have over the age of 23, um, which might sound mental, but obviously the board have discussed the new club vision to sign players under the age of 23. I imagine they're looking at the squad and looking at the fact that a huge, huge chunk of our players, I mean, you can see here, 11 of our first team players are north of 28. They are players who are right at the end of their prime or, you know, hitting that wall of kind of decline. I mean, you can see here just sorting by age. The four oldest players in our team are four players who were regular starters this year. Um, that is going to be a, a bit of a challenge when it comes to transitioning, I feel like. I, I think the defence really is the area of the biggest concern. Of course, we are looking to develop players through our youth setup. I'm looking at Julian Blaze and thinking, man, you could be really good. Interestingly enough, he's actually taken up Algerian nationality. I guess he had dual nationality and he's decided that 
Algeria might be the better bet for him right now. But you can see here at 15, um, he signs his first ever deal with the club uh, in October when he turns 16. Until then, I don't think any teams can poach him. As soon as he hits that age, do expect to see him get on a part-time deal. But there's a player like this guy, as soon as October comes around next year, straight in the first team, straight away trying to develop him. I think we've really got to make that our immediate aim. I've also got players like Jemba Diallo, who has improved a lot. If we just look at Diallo, I mean, you can see here, he's had an outstanding development for two years. He's kind of a little, gone a little under the radar. He's a player who generated right at the beginning of our first season at the club, and I wasn't really sure what to make of him. Obviously, a few negatives, including the fact that he is made of glass, and maybe his potential is a little bit capped. But at the same time, I do feel like he could probably come into the first team, and in the absence of M. Bacani, offer us something as a bit of a striking option. So... There is that opportunity to promote from within, and obviously with our continued development of our kind of, well, not youth facilities, but our youth recruitment, I am kind of keen to see us continue to do, you know, more youth stuff. I've kind of abandoned that in the first few years, and considering that was one of the big things I wanted to do here, I do need to go a little bit back to the drawing board. Anyway, you can see here we are improving our youth recruitment, or in fact, we've improved it again already. So that is the third improvement to youth recruitment this year. I was a little bit taken aback when the board granted that request. I asked it off the back of us going semi-pro, but if we now look at facilities, uh, you can see here we've got exceptional youth recruitment. That makes me so cautiously optimistic that going into the future we are going to be able to start to develop our own talent um i could do with improving the youth facilities although they didn't grant that you see youth facilities determines how good players initial ability is when they generate at the club whereas youth recruitment dictates how good their potential could be and so the issue with having low youth facilities like this but then exceptional youth recruitment is you have loads of players who generate super low ability have these unbelievably high kind of skill caps in terms of how good they could be and potential ability but because the gap's so big they very rarely reach that potential so if you were to ask me what's the next plan in terms of facilities to upgrade i would point at the youth facilities However, it's not cheap to do that, and additionally, with the current financial situation, with the transition to going semi-pro, we're still trying to sort out a stadium for ourselves. Um, that is not, and I, I want to say it's not an immediate option. I would love it to be an immediate option, and I will continue to ask for it, but I don't really expect to see that granted this year, if I'm being completely honest with you. But anyway, that kind of wraps up the season here. Well, at Luzanak, it's only season number two. And we've done two seasons in 13 episodes in two weeks of daily uploads. Just a little bit of a heads up. I think tomorrow for my Sunday, I may skip an upload day, have a, a rest day, a chance for maybe people who have fallen behind to catch up a little. So we'll be back again on Monday to start the new season. I hope you're ready for it. Knowing me, I'll change my mind and there will be a video tomorrow. So maybe keep an eye out for it just in case. But I think we're going to have a rest, everyone. A day of rest, a day of recoup next season's gonna be a big one it's gonna be a big challenge i hope to see you guys for it thank you so much for watching as always it is me jack and i will talk to you guys in a bit i'm out <laughs>